All right, so let's continue where we left off. Um, so, okay, so we have the click state checking here. We have the release part, now the release. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, similar to the pressed state, we call the on mouse release for all click states and then in here so this one we actually do we always execute no matter the click state so we do have the released part of that goes in here And we do this part, we check if the mouse, if the left mouse button was clicked, but that's information we also have in our implementation, so we can use that. And then you copy selection, and it doesn't really matter on mouse release, but it doesn't really matter which click state you're in. Okay. So that's something, so and that's something that we have here, and that's that so this this is actually working fine. So we don't need to change anything here. Um The one thing that I'm not particularly liking here is that we do an on mouse click here, which is a single click, and then we do. So actually, we don't. We know the click state already. It's the single click. And actually, I think we need to reverse this because this is the condition where we don't want to do anything. And then in the other conditions, we do want to do something. Um, but in this case, because we're on the single mouse click, we actually can execute this no matter what. It's in other click states where we actually need to do some checking. Uh. Yeah, it's a bit hard to to know exactly now what we need, where we need to do this. But let's let's do one more check. So this is the part that we execute when we didn't go from click to double, and when we didn't do, go from double to triple. That's when we execute this. And so that means we can be in the in the click state without changing. We can be in the double click without changing the triple click or the none. And so here we are on uh, the regular click state and we just need and we need to check and we need to check if you went from click to double click well actually no because we we are in the click state so we know we didn't go to double click Current click state is, is click in this case, and so the previous click state doesn't really matter. We just need to execute this part, right? So this whole we do still need we we do still need this this block eventually, just not right here. So we're just going to comment it out for now. We go and we're going to need to make some changes there as well. Uh, oh, and this part we also don't really need for now. this <coughs> oh 
All right. Um, now let's see what is the next part. So we've got the on mouse click and are we doing something with the modifier? Yes, this is where we send the modifiers, all right. And so we've got the element, st element state released, which is implemented. So let's move on to the, um, well, let's make sure that we, oh. On mouse pressed. So we, we, we moved all of this around. So this is all done for now. We also moved the on mouse release. So that's also done for now. And so now we need to look, need to um, implement, and we already have one, so we can probably just copy it. But for now we need to implement this part. Um, this and this will become um, actually the on mouse double click right yeah and we already have something uh, double click. It's actually already called on mouse double click. And that's this one. Right. So let's, and we also have the on mouse triple click. So let's just move this around for now. And we'll see. Move this to here. And now we do need to change the input that we provide um this is for the double click we also yeah we also have the triple click and so and then this one can be removed Yeah, and here too we can we can this is what we already did. So in the mouse double click we check the state if it's press or release, and then we perform some action and similar to here, and the same for the triple click where we do the line selection. So these are pretty simple to implement. Uh, and in fact, this this is all we need to do uh, if I'm correct. Uh, let's see, so we and so on mouse press can now be removed, I think. On mouse release uh, can also be removed. Like this. All right. And so this, so we do still need to move this. So we've got the, um, the block URL launcher. Now the, so if you go from click to double click, so then we need to check in the double click if the last click state was click. And let's see, did we URL launcher? This was only for the pressed event, right? So that's this one. So then here we would say something like um, if self context mouse uh, last click state was um, click state click. In that case, we actually want to form this one. Now, it might be that we can just shuffle this around and um, make this code easier and it still does what it's supposed to do. But for now, we're just copying, exactly copying the um, what we currently have in the, uh, in the code. 
And so this would become a double click. Now I do want to, in this case, I mean, there is no, I don't think there is a way to get in the almost triple click without actually having the previous state to be almost double click. Because if you click again in a triple click, you would go to a single click. Um, so my initial response would be that we can just do it like this. Does the same apply to double? It should. Uh, the only thing is that we do we do need to check the um, uh, if the state equals to elements state uh, rest. Then we want to do this part. And and so this can probably, if we are in the double click, then the previous state should always be the click state. So this should also be able to remove this here. All right. <laughs> So let's see, and what are we still missing? Okay, so this part, we've got the double, we've got the triple, and we've got the mouse click. We don't have none, okay, right, and so in click state none, we're actually, it shouldn't, it shouldn't even be possible to get into, to get here in the click state none, because the, um, the click state will already have changed you did some mouse input, so it will change from none to something else, but obviously we need to exhaust the pattern matching here. Uh, we could just ignore it, but I think this is, this is the best solution. And then we, so this part is done. And this is the part that we still need to do, I think. <clears throat> now, the question here is why so we've got the double click and we want to check if the if the current state is double click I feel like we can just because we already have the on mouse double click so I feel like we should be able to just remove this part We'll see if that, that's actually the case. Um, and I'm pretty sure, that our, well, maybe not pretty sure, but there's a big chance that things will, uh, will start breaking. So we're not using the modifiers here. Um, I still think it makes sense to send them into, to keep symmetry between the single double and triple click in case someone adds some functionality. So for now, we'll just mark them as not being used, but you are able to use them if you want to. And so we've got the on mouse. Uh, and so this part here, yeah, so this is also the part that we fix, right? Oh, actually, this is something we still need to do. Um, but we'll do that next. But for now, so this is the rest. Yeah, so the, this whole part also needs to happen in the other click states. Or, uh, at least that's how the current uh, code works. Um, We can do a check, <clears throat> although the editor should have caught anything that wasn't correct. There are a couple of other things that we need to change, and I'm pretty sure we're not done with this change, as we see here. Cannot move out of board context, right? Uh, where do we set this? Um. Just want it to be a reference, and similarly, uh, we still need to do it there. Let's see, uh, 
Um, let's see. Okay, so now we're passing in a reference, which is not what we want here. Uh, although I wonder, it's not really, it's not really that interesting. This was more of a code cleanup stuff. Um, so instead of doing it this way, we can just say, um, we'll just paste it here. And the same here for click state. And now this one we do need to um, clone. Although, I mean, it isn't copy, but it could be copy, right? I, I don't see a reason. It's not like, yeah, this should, this should just be copy, I feel, copy, clone. So let's see. Shouldn't be a perf any performance implications there because it's just ordinary enum with some um, uh, with some values that don't hold any data. All right, so it compiles. Um, I guess we can run, we can run the test, but let's just run for now. Let's see what happens. Let's see. All right. Now we can just type here and we can test that it works. So if we had a, let's say, hello world, if we do a single click, This seems to do what it should do. Actually, no, this is bad. this is wrong. Something happened there. All right, so apparently we are going straight to uh, triple click. And by clicking it once, we're actually going straight to, so it feels like we're skipping one because this is, this is what double click should do. And double clicking is what triple click should do. So, okay. So let's see. So probably we made, we made, uh, we made an error in, in reasoning about where to update the click state and when to use that click state. So let's do, let's, let's run the test suite. Um, now I do wonder, can I, how can I let's see? Hmm. I didn't change anything there, did I?
It's interesting. It did compile, and now it's. Let's see. Where was this? Five eight. Or is this inside a test that it? Yeah, it is inside a test. Um, and that's actually what I. Um, Right, I think this is because of um, a rebase that I did. So probably this was removed from the uh, from the use. Not sure, but I think that's the case. This is something we're going to change as well. Um, the direction enum is just. Uh, it has a left or a right value. Um, and that's something that was also proposed, like maybe we should just not use this and just do a function, semantic search, left semantic search, right, or something like that. So we'll see. But first, let's get the, um, the logic that we built here. Let's get that working. Um, let's see. So again, we'll first check the update click state. <coughs> now we could uh, we could actually, right, exactly. Double click and release. Yeah, so there's something, something we're doing there that's not right. So let's first check out the implementation we have here. So I, yeah, one thing that's actually happening here is we do the, uh, we do the update click state on both click and the release uh, element state or the pressed and release element state. And that's something that we, um, we don't want. So we could, for starters, add if um, state equals element state uh, press. And only run this on the pressed situation. Let's see if and how that changes things. Because that's what we that's what happened here, right? The on mouse press was the function that actually handles the transitioning to click states. So and this is only called on pressed and not on released. So that's obviously a difference. And that would also uh, explain the double click being triple because you've got click release click, which would result in triple clicking. Right. So these tests now pass. Um, we can do another run and see how this changes things. So single clicking, oh, hang on. Yeah. So you need to hold shift while doing this because I'm actually in Tmux. So single clicking works as expected. Really clicking to release also works. Double clicking and then release also still works. Triple clicking works. Uh, sorry, double clicking on a matching bracket works. Triple clicking works. Triple clicking while holding and dragging works. Oh, there is something that holding, dragging, then releasing. No, this is this is wrong. Right. And then does this this does work? So double clicking, dragging. So this is the semantic selection where it selects words, quote unquote words, or a continuous group of characters. Um, and if you release it on another word, then it still keeps the original selection. Uh, yeah, so this is also uh, an issue that was there before. Uh, that actually that was fixed in the in the last in the, before we started making these changes. So we reintroduced that issue, and that's uh, I'm 
pretty sure I can find out uh, find where that issue originates from. Um, so what happens is if you double click uh, and then you release, you get the semantic selection, uh, or sorry, the bracket pair selection, but the releasing should be triggered fairly quickly after the uh, the second click. So it should be click, click, and then it should do it, but click, click, holding, and then releasing, it should not do the selection. Because if you do that, you can do click, click, and then drag, for example, to this one, then release, and it would actually switch to doing the, uh, the uh, bracket pair selection on the second bracket. And the same happens if you do click, click, and you start dragging, and you were to release actually on this one, you say, okay, I want to select this range, and you release, it would swap the, it would change the selection to, to this selection. And so that's something we're going to need to fix. <coughs> but it's looking pretty nice already. Uh, the triple click one, I'm not too sure what happens there because I'm, I don't think I really touched that code, but we'll, we'll see, we'll figure it out. And so, so we've got the double click. So this is where we do the bracket pair selection here. This is the one that we're going to fix. And so, and then I think it's nicer to do to do it in this location than what we had before. It just makes it, it puts it all closer together. Um, and we can check out the pull request for what we actually did and make this work. And what made it work is this part here. So we've got this, we... We check that the release Yeah, so what happens now is the the on mouse double click and the and the on mouse triple click, etc. They they execute um, whenever you whenever you click the button. And it's the same as what happens, for example, in your in your uh, in your browser. If I double click this string, click click. Now there is this. I imagine in the background there is this double click function that that has triggered, which has uh, selected the word. So it doesn't it doesn't it triggers on the press state, the second press state within a within a, a time span, uh, within an acceptable time span. If if it's out of the time span, it's just two two single clicks like click click. So now it doesn't select it. But if I click click on mouse pressed, the second mouse press, it does the uh, double click function that does the selection it doesn't do it when i release the mouse so it's not that i have to click click and then release for it to work i just have to click click and it works and so in our case so that the, so the on mouse double click executes correctly which is on the moment when the second mouse click uh, the the pressed element state is registered but in our case we actually also uh, we, are, we want to start the bracket pair selection yeah, we want to start the bracket pair selection when this when this released again. So that's where we have this element state released here. So the on mouse double click is right. So the on mouse double click is uh, and also the single click and the triple click. They are and I think that's the issue that we have with the triple click actually. Uh, um, probably if we move this. Here we actually solve the, um, uh, we just probably want to do a match statement in that case. Um, so we'll say uh, state and if element state pressed, then we want to do, want to do all of this. Uh, and element state released is when we don't want to do anything. So what happened here? Did I? So what happened here is that the uh, the triple click. Let's go. Just quickly go back. It should be fixed now with this change, at least for the triple click. We still need to fix the double click or the um, bracket pair selection. But what, what happens is that the 
triple click function, both these single click, double click, and triple click functions, they execute both on press and on release. That's what we want because then in the function itself, you can actually uh, manipulate what you want depending on the state of the button at that point. Um, but in this case, we were executing that code on both on press and release. And so when you do the triple click, you drag and then you released, you would get the, um, so we've got triple click, drag. Oh, hang on, I'm still in the, so triple click, drag, release, right? So now the selection only happens on click. And now when I release, it doesn't actually do anything. And that's what you want. Actually on release, it would, I think it would copy the, the, uh, the, um, the selection. Although maybe that's a preference, I'm not sure. But this is what we what we want to happen. And this one is still, um, or at least it should. We didn't fix it yet, no. no. So this, this is actually the same. So we want to do, uh, what we want to do now is we want to check if the release is within a certain time span. Now we might actually have to um, keep some state around for that. I'm not sure yet. Because this is, um, this is timing based now because on double click when pressing we want to start doing the semantic selection but when you release you want to start the bracket pair selection but only if you release within the um, within the configured double click threshold this is not completely accurate and the double click threshold is meant as a timer for when you for the threshold within where you have to do the second click not the second release uh, but we'll we'll use this one for now um, but that also means that we need to know if the button has changed and actually i think we have all the data that we need for this Although we do update the last click timestamp. Or actually we did move that. Yeah, we do update the last click state here and the last click timestamp is something that we moved to the bottom. Yeah, so that's fine. So that's nice. So we can continue using this within our implementation without worrying about it being overridden in this, this loop or this, this uh, mouse input event. So this whole thing so we could let's see what makes sense here so we could put this data here and then this one can go uh it goes for it right so this one can go here We do have the button, we know the last button, we do have the last time Sam, so we can set the elapsed time and then we check if it's within the threshold and if it is, and we can even, can we? No, we, we take the point here, so yeah. And the mouse button left. Yeah, this is this too is something that we want to do here. Right, and now we have a, um, and we could, we could move this into the release state itself. Yeah, I'm not sure what, what makes sense. Because now we have to do another, another one like this where we're not using it right now. Uh, and again, we could do a catch all, but I don't think that makes sense. Uh, and we could move this if statement inside this block so that other functionality added later can be in this one. But I think this actually, uh, for me, this makes a, a bit of sense. Um, well, yeah, it's questionable because you, we, we also have this if statement within the block. And this is this is pretty specific. I mean, it doesn't really make sense to create a whole new block only for, to match on this if statement and this if statement. Because, um, yeah, this is really specific to this bracket pair selection. Mm. But we'll leave this as is for now. We'll see, because I'm not, I'm not, I'm also still learning Ross and what the uh, patterns are that you use usually. There are multiple ways of solving this. I just don't know what the um, the most frequent one is that people use. So 
Yeah, so this should work now. So let's do another run. And if this works, then we're pretty close to we still need to do some cleaning up. So um, we're not done yet, but this was the the more bigger change that we needed to do. So if this works, if I release it here, right, it doesn't work anymore as expected. Similar here, this still works. Okay, I feel like this is working now as expected. Um, now it would be uh, good to run the whole test suite, see what happens there. And in the meantime, let's let's see if we. Yeah, so this is something I feel like we should just move this into the um, in the update click state function. Although then you would just have a return on the top of the update click state. But it does make somewhat sense because we really only want to do this. Uh, although we don't really, then we would have to pass in the, um, the state because we're not passing that in. Does it make sense that we only want to do this on the, um, how was it again? The press state? Yeah, I feel like it does. Do we keep track of the state, uh, like in the in the context, or is it just? No, I don't think we do, right? No, it's just a button that we keep track of. Otherwise, we would have the information on self or the context of self. So, all right. So this one passed as well. So everything is still green. So that's nice. Uh, I do feel that there is some cleaning up we can still do here. Um. Specifically this one here. Do we do we want to keep this here? I just don't know what message bar means. I'm still presuming it's the top bar. Oh, but message bar? I mean it's not really a message bar. But I don't really like Alacrity doesn't really have any interface element other than just the view where your terminal is running in. So I'm not sure what message bar means. Of course, we could do a quick search um, to see what if there is some kind of pull request or something that added this. There is a message bar create uh, module. Message for this, this is the message. Actually, now that I think about it, I think the message bar was the yellow line that we, the yellow thingy that we got in the bottom of the screen. Or is that, was it a Tmux bar? I'm not sure. And I'm not even sure how to, how to trigger that again. I think that yeah actually I do think it's um, this could very well be the message bar <coughs> try and get output if it's too long and that's not what's happening here because it just fits. It just barely fits. Append close button to the first line. Yeah. And does it? Is it the uh, the X with the? Yeah. Yeah. So this is this is the message bar. I never really I mean other than this error which I've seen before. I never really experienced the um, this showing up. All right, but I feel like. I mean, yeah, 
you would you would change the implementation if we just so right now you can do a right mouse button click or uh, any mouse button click on the X and it would work. Um, but does it really make sense? I mean, it's a, it, doesn't it make sense that it's just a left mouse button click that you use? It's a breaking change, of course, but um, I'm not sure if it's really so, and then the on message bar click. Right. So if you if you click on the close button, then the message would be popped. So potentially there are multiple messages stacked on top, I guess. And you can remove them one by one by clicking the close button. Um And otherwise, you clear the selection. Let's see it again. So I think we, it's, how can I? There is some way that I can trigger this. Right, like this. And, but it only happens once, right? So if I close this one now, and I start another one. Yeah, there's, there's no, not a second one popping up. No, okay. So they, they aren't stacking, so I'm not sure what the popping means. Um, message buffer. It pops something off the buffer, does it doesn't return anything, so it just removes it when you when you click the, the cross. Alright, makes sense. Now, and again, it supports all the clicks, the, uh, all the uh, mouse buttons, so left, middle, right. Um, then we have the, if you release, you copy the selection. If you press, you clear the selection. <coughs> so what does this mean? So did I, did I copy something now? I copied something. There's some kind of, no. No, I don't think you can actually do something with it. Um, so I feel like it, it it's okay to move this to the to clean that up by moving this function to the um, to the single click, and that way we don't need to have this whole if else condition here. We can just say okay, we're going to match uh, based on the information that we have. Skip normal mouse events if the message bar has been clicked. Yeah, so it does say message at point, so that could mean that it is somehow possible to have multiple messages. Uh, it's just that apparently this is only triggered once. Um, so yeah, but we'll see. For now, we're going to move this to the, um, uh, let's see, to the on mouse click. And we'll just put it in here for now. Yeah, so it is, it is triggering, um, We do want to pass in the state to the message bar click, so we don't need, we don't need to trigger it in the um, pattern match that we do here. So then we would do something like this if if we wanted to skip the rest of the um, processing. I'm not quite sure why you want to skip that though. 
and it's so nice to actually be able to copy whatever is whatever is there so let's just try what happens if we do it like this we do an assert here we could also do add it to the let statement if you wanted mm, but yeah let's just leave it the way it is for now we have the state we have the point and we also have the message here so this should just work and we'll remove this for now oh, actually we'll name this um, oh, let's remove it for now and so i'm closing this one again and so now down here we actually have a more a simple a simple setup this is still something that we can uh, change but for now so we set the point or actually we get the point then we pass it into our click states the click state none doesn't actually do anything so that's fine and um, now we could just say here we could say unreachable because it is unreachable or it should be unreachable and um, yeah, so let's see if it still runs. Uh, let's see how did we trigger all right so we triggered it again and so now let's see it's a bit funky like my okay I Selecting this doesn't work, which is fine. I guess it's it works differently than I had hoped. I'm not quite sure why this is happening. Like, what is? Is it because of something I'm doing here? It could obviously be because of what I what I did. Um, the only thing that I can, hmm, no, it's not overlaying. Finished. Yeah, there's some funky things going on there. Now I'm not quite sure if it's because of the message bar, because of the changes that we made, or just, because I, I don't, I can test it out. Well, actually, now that I think about it, of course, this isn't going to work because I'm still in the. Um, <clears throat> this is my uh, the terminal that I have running or the Alacrity really instance that I have running, which isn't running the new code yet. It's just the new code happens when I do cargo run. The interesting thing is, and this is something that always was the case, is that the message bar ends up in the in this instance instead of the other one. Um, Right. So the, the, the weird stuff that you saw happening is, is not because of our changes. Um, it is because of the message bar, though, because now you see it's no longer happening. Um, so there does appear to be some kind of bug with that implementation. Maybe we can check that out in a different episode, but it's not, um, it's not because of our code. Because if we now do cargo run, like this instance here that you, that you see here, this is the one that has the altered changes. And so, um, but we don't get them. Well, maybe if we, now you see, so the, the message bar pops up here and doesn't pop, in, it pop up in this window. Um, so yeah. 
So that's um, what could we do about that? So I guess maybe we could. Mm. Well, a couple of things. First, um, we could go to Alacrity config and we could say um, we'll remove this for now. Yeah, you can definitely see the message bar messing up with the with the rendering. So that's definitely an issue. Uh, yeah, definitely. It's, uh, it's pretty messy. It doesn't, uh, as you can see, it's all over the place now. The text, the text itself is, hasn't changed, so that's not an issue. But the rendering is definitely messed up. Um, but what we did is we disabled starting this in Tmux, so now we get a new Alacrity instance with the new code without actually starting in Tmux. Um, now I wonder, would we still get that? Um, I think the issue is it's really related to um, using it with the error that you get is related to using Tmux. Um, but what we could do now, I guess, is we could say um, Tmux. So we'll just open a Tmux window from here. Mm. Now we're not getting it. So what if we now opened uh, if we now did another we're doing some cargo run inception here. Um, so now we have another window open here. All right, so now we actually have the error pop up in the in our new windows instead of the original one. So now we can see what happens here. So first of all, uh, well, that was did we just close it? We did close it. Why would that happen? I mean, we are. We didn't do a return there, so it makes sense. It, the, or at least the rest of the code is executed. I did a single click, by the way. I did a single left click when that happened. Um, like, did we get in a. Ah, right. Line self num line. So we got on a search, and that's why it's. Uh, that's why it panicked. So there is some kind of mod 393. Is it the grid mod? <clears throat> right, so here's an assertion. It's larger than the grid dimension. Yeah, okay, and I'm, I'm assuming because we are executing the rest of the code, which assumes that you're still inside the terminal itself, while the message bar is apparently something that's separate. So that's also why you can't just select code in there or anything. It's just implemented in a different way and so it's not part of the grid of the terminal itself um, and so that's why you can't easily make it work like where it actually and that also means that probably hmm, Well, you probably just want to abort um, in the regular mouse input if you are in this uh, doing something on this message bar because they're just not compatible in terms of the data that you have. Uh, I wonder if we the update click state does it do anything with no? So it doesn't do anything with the um, with the points uh, the the. the 
the, the location of your cursor or the lines or anything like that so this this one just works even if you if you click on the message bar question is if you want to if you want that to happen but it, at least this one is fine the um, master click on mouse mouse input so possibly the returning here works because there is just this is a question mark but because there is no way to execute the triple and double click once if you're clicking on the message bar as long as we don't execute the on mouse click one no that's not true because we do we do do the update click state so if you double click on a message bar the click state will become double click and so the on mouse double click would execute yeah now <clears throat> we could still if you wanted we could still uh, if you go to input again um that's something with message bar The last button is still set if the message bar is set. I'm not quite sure why that is, but we could just move this. We, we could remove the else and just say return when you're on the message bar. Because I also don't really see the point of recording the last button if you click on the message bar. Sure, the last button was a different button, but it wasn't part of the, like it was in a whole separate entity within Alacrity. It was uh, used on the message bar, not so much on the, the terminal uh, window itself. So now that we know this, we can move this back to the mouse input. <clears throat> and we could even say that we now uh, obviously we do need to we do need to have a point. So we could capture the point here and we could just say if the message is at this point then just execute the message bar logic All right because now we just don't we don't update the click state we don't uh, on message bar click so yeah so we have the button state which is fine we we get that by the os itself so we we don't have to do anything we don't have to prepare that in advance <clears throat> we check the point and we check the message itself and that's it we clear the selection i guess yeah because if you have a selection and then you click on the message bar you want to clear that selection um that's why this this clear selection is here um you can select the message bar but if you have something selected yeah this is a bit weird because i guess if you start dragging and then you go over the message bar and then you release that's when the copy selection would trigger which also makes sense um, but that still means that we can, that I don't really see any harm in just returning early, doing it like this. That way we still don't have this if else logic, we can just do, we can check if we're on the message bar and that's it. All right, now we are going to need to um, do this again, do a cargo run. And if I, yeah, so now we open Tmux. Enable this again. We'll do uh, we'll do another cargo run. 
now let's move this one down and now if we do another right so here we are again okay so let's see what happens so if i click it all right so this is good um if i select something and then release now it should have copied i'm not sure i'm not sure if i have this enabled actually well, actually the how does that oh we don't have it here right now not sure if this is the way it's supposed to or we can check that out later what the current state is um you can just click this one Entered unreachable code. All right, so apparently we can get into a none state because the message bar um, because if we click this, what oh, is the detached terminal now? So if we, so this state where we, or this check where we did the, uh, where is it? Uh, mouse input, this unreachable check here, we can actually get into a non-click state. <coughs> Not quite sure why that is. I mean, we can fix it easily by reverting this change, but I'm not quite sure why it is. Um, actually, right, because we only update the click state when the click state, when the element state is pressed. So, and I guess, right, and I guess what happens is you click the cross in the message bar, and the, and I'm, pres I'm I think, uh, message bar. This triggers on pressed exactly. So when you click the cross when pressing, that's that's when the the message bar is removed. So now your mouse is actually hovering over the terminal window again. And then when you release the button, there is another release. There is another uh, mouse event that gets triggered, and this time it's a release event. And so that's where you end up in a non situation where the uh, click state is none because this. Uh, update click state is ignored or is skipped. So, yeah, so there are a couple of things here. I'm not sure how other UIs handle this, but one thing that I'm pretty sure of is that, for example, if I were to cargo run here, if I click this button and I keep it open, as you can see, it doesn't trigger on click, it only triggers on release. So if I click it and then release, now it actually terminates the window. And so, but in the case of, um, can I trigger this again? Let's see. All right. So in this case, if I click and hold, now it's gone already. And so if I release now, now I'm releasing in this terminal window. And somehow I feel like it just makes more sense to um, to update the uh, on message bar, the on message bar click. To move this to release, although, yeah. The pressed could still be clear selection. But the release, yeah. So this is possible, but what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to just ignore this for now. We can still do it in the future, of course. Um, but I feel like then we're drifting off what this pull request is trying to achieve and we're making the, the change bigger than it needs to be. Um, so we can just ignore the situation here um, and we can um, what we can do is we can just add some 
documentation here um, to do uh, this um, can be and I'll just do a re a reachable I will say like this I will say this state can be um, this match arm can trigger when a message bar is visible and the um, button is clicked the message bar disappears um, on pressed um, element state pressed and so the next uh, mouse input would be element state released on the terminal uh, after the message bar was removed from the screen ideally uh, this is getting a bit long so maybe we'll remove it but uh, let's let's see it ideally um when clicking and uh, ideally we change the message bar mouse interaction to uh, message bar uh, button to only trigger on release and not on press <coughs> all right we'll leave that in for now um we'll see this part is done okay so i feel like this we've wrapped this part up and uh, this is now working um right yeah we validated this is working we still need to check how the message bar actually works in the in the current setup uh actually and that's something that we can easily check for a couple of uh, right now and then we'll wrap up again and we'll do the next episode will be about cleaning up the rest of the comments and then i feel like we're done with the next iteration on this broadcast and we'll see if there are some feedback again which is fine of course that's how i learn and that's also how I feel open source uh, contribution should work where you just iterate um, and you see I'm working with a I've never worked with the code of Alacrity before and as I mentioned before I'm also relatively new to, to Rust itself so I'm working with a limited set of knowledge not only the knowledge on, on Rust that I have but also the, the knowledge on the on the terminal on Alacrity itself so I'm making assumptions a lot of assumptions while I'm working on this and there's a big chance that there are things that I'm misunderstanding or that were put in place for a specific reason. Now, ideally, you would have a, if that's the case, where you put something in place for a specific reason, you would have a test case that validates that it, it isn't changed in the future. Um, I did notice that um, there are some, some holes in the test suite in, in Alacrity. Um, so you can just assume the tests are passing. So I didn't break anything. Um, but um, so that's where this 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 back and forth of me making change, maybe not understanding something in Rust or in Alacrity, and then getting feedback on well, maybe you, you, you should tackle it in this way, um, is very valuable to me and for the contributors to Alacrity because they don't have to do the work on making this. I'm doing the work, um, but at the same time, um, they get to steer me in a direction where they are happy with the contribution, and it's it 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 is. Perhaps not exactly, but close enough to what they would have built if they did it themselves without them actually uh, spending the time 
uh, of implementing it, they are still giving feedback. Now, there is a chance and a, a high, high likely outcome where they actually spend more time reviewing and giving me some pointers than uh, they would have if they implement this themselves. But obviously, the the long goal there could be that I'm contributing more towards Alacrity as we move along uh, because I feel confident in working in the code and that would eventually, you would, you would eventually reach a tipping point where I'm contributing more than they are spending on uh, coaching me or would have spent if they would, would implement them themselves. Um, so yeah, so with that aside, let's just do a quick check. How did we trigger this again? I just, all right, there we go. I don't know why this triggers. So that's also why it's uh, some kind of error, uh, but it triggers if I just do some quick selection and deselections. Um, so now we, ha uh, let's close this one. So now we, we have this one here. So what I wanted to check is what happens if I, if I, uh, if I start, yeah, you can see it's still like the, it's still messing up the, the, the view. So that's, all right. So if I release, it does actually stop the, And I feel like ours isn't doing that actually. Maybe it is now. Yeah, I'll have to check. Um, and so drag release and this just doesn't do anything. It is a, it is pretty much an edge case. So, but I'd still if it's easy to fix, I would still like to fix it, uh, which we'll do in the second uh, in the in the next episode. Um, and so this still deselects it. Yep. All right. So let's wrap it up here. Uh, we got another couple of steps further along towards uh, making this work as, as we wanted to. The uh, next steps are just making this interaction with the message bar work as expected. And then there are a couple of cleanups that were suggested that we can do. And then we start committing everything. Um, Usually I'm better at committing smaller things while I work on it, but somehow I'm still in this, this recording stuff is also new to me. So I'm still not really in my original mindset while I work on code where I'm just missing out on stuff. For example, like when I make a change, make a commit of that change. Uh, so we'll, I'll try to split up the, the, the changes into multiple commits, but if not possible, we'll do, we'll do a bigger commit. I don't think it's that much of a change. So yeah, thank you for watching again. Um, and I will continue uh, in the next episode with uh, moving this along to a mergeable PR. Bye-bye.